choices. We will continue our discussion on solid waste management. In the book of Psalms, chapter 24, verse 1, it says, The port is the Lord, and the fullness thereof. We therefore call on all Guyanese to have a new mindset and help to return Guyana to the beauty it was, the Garden City. God bless you. Stay tuned with us. Last week we started a very spirited discussion on the whole concept of solid waste management. And this evening we want to continue uh, to elaborate on some of the ideas and concepts that we mentioned. But before we go any further, you know, we, we want to establish from the beginning that the management of solid waste is not confined to any particular group or sector of the society, but the management, if we're going to really remove all the filth and what we see in the city, it has to be a collective effort on the part of all stakeholders. And this is something that we really want to, um, you know, to, 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 to develop because, you know, the saying goes, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. So one part might be pulling, but then if the other part is not pulling, then all that we're doing will go to, to a loss. And so we really need to see again the, the, um, an attitudinal change in how we dispose, in how we treat with solid waste. And we will discuss some of those areas that we started last week. And I remember last week we said that um, one of the first assignments that God gave to man you know, is that to work, to work and to tend, and to care. And so sometimes we operate as though um, the order doesn't belong to anybody, and so I could do whatever you want. We operate like the days when judges, the judges rule, and every man did what was right in his own sight. But if we understand that this word that has been given, this word has been given to us by God, and we have a responsibility to care and to tend the word, we will, I think we will see the kind of change in, in the mindset. So last week we started looking at some of the areas in the hierarchy that we can um, that involves solid waste management. And we spoke about avoidance. And we spoke about um, reduction, buying exactly you know what you need, not because you want to rise in terms of income. You, you start to splurge, and next thing you know, you have to be throwing away items and so on. Reuse. We talk about you know plastic bags, how you could actually use them back again and so on. And we, we, we spoke a little bit about recycling, and we will develop that some more. Recover. And you also develop the old idea of the disposal, which we, we spoke considerably time we spent on, on speaking about disposal. But we want to continue looking at this this whole situation because education is key, and we believe that if we are going to make that change, people must be enlightened, they must be edified, and so information must be given so that people can act upon that information. Gentlemen, please add to, to what you, you just said there. Um, I think the, the whole issue is about attitude and uh, solid waste management, like you said, is um, all of us should be involved in it. Um, solid waste management cannot be an event-oriented um, issue. Um, you know, like we go into different seasons and, you know, it cannot be just a seasonal um, activity. Yeah. Um, it has to be something that is, is continuous and attitudes are not formed by, you know, just event here and event there, but it, it, it needs a new mindset. And if we are to develop such a new mindset, a paradigm shift um, where solid waste management is concerned, we won't just only clean our um, environment, but we will keep it clean. And there's a dis distinction between cleaning something and keeping it clean. And I think that is where we are to focus on keeping our environment, keeping our thoughts um, surrounding clean. So the whole issue about solid, solid waste ma management has to remove from being an event to a whole attitude not change towards it. I, 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 I want to agree with you, Assistant Pastor Lee, because as I look around, I think we just don't need the drains to be clean. We don't need the drains to be deserted. I think one of my brothers, you draw it to my attention, and I want to agree that we have to go a little further as a partnership. But over the last few days, when the city, I thought, went through a dark.
dark time, in the times of floods, in the past. I saw some signs of hope. Um, I remember one to the day of the flood. I went on Wheaton Street and um, the water was moving slowly. But I saw as the water was moving, I saw how folks, I don't know where they came from, if City Long or Public Works Ministry. They were, they were this four by four people that brought people, they were cleaners, came with moves. And no sooner the water was pulling off and the lace was resting on the road, I started trying to sweep up and to clean up. And I said, wow, um, somebody is, is thinking. I passed around the markets and so on. And I, I see little efforts of trying to address the issue of our waste management. And I thought, good, good sign, signs of hope. But I believe it has to go deeper because we have the responsibility as stewards from God to take care. To serve God requires being good stewards, being good, um, responsible people for the assignment that He's given to us. And so all of us, from the home to the government offices to the municipality, to all these different areas, we have to be good stewards because service requires excellence. And as you serve God, you worship Him, and worship Him in excellence. So necessary for all of us to do. To alleviate, to alleviate this, this problem that you are experiencing, to my mind, it, there's a springboard, and it, it, there's so many other contributing factors. You know, I think in one of our presentation last week, it was mentioned that someone in the United States went out to feed the homeless and they met up with some resistance from the authorities. And I'm thinking about us educating the, the, the home, you know, persons in the home, giving them the necessary tools that they need to ensure that the environment is kept clean. But what about the destitute? What about those persons that are living on the streets? We, we, you know, you know, kind-hearted gestures, we reach out to, to, to meet the needs and who clean up after them? Who take care of the garbage that they would create? You understand? Because uh, in our fairness, we know that the authorities, both local and central, have the responsibility to ensure that a timely disposal of garbage is done. But who picks up the slack when these persons are not in place, and we have to take these things into consideration. If we are going to go out into the streets to do to, to our charity work and to be a blessing to others, we need to ensure that we put the necessary things in place to get rid of the garbage after the persons would have been fed or whatever. It's not just to feed them and, and leave the garbage on the streets. Excuse my creelies, but I am from Lake One. And we have a guy in these proverbs that says, blood will run a drain, blood will run a vein, water will run a drain. I want you to know that all over the city, there is no running water in the drains. Unless and until water can run freely in the drains, we'll always have a, a problem. So we need to really look at our waterways and I'm asking you not to contribute by throwing things in the drain. In the drain. Some of the things in the drain, concrete drains, two feet, four feet, they have been clogged. We need to get those things clean. You know, we must recognize some things that um the keeping in the city really begins with us. It's the mentality of every individual. If you want to be healthy, you have to keep your environment clean because sickness and disease, all these viruses and things that can come up, if you don't keep your space clean, it can attack you and then it can go to the other person. So if you take responsibility for where you are, what you do around you, it will overflow. It will spread to your neighborhood. And it goes to the neighborhood. From the neighborhood, it goes into the community. Here it is. 
your trash can be put on the carpet and you put it outside here because you expect it to be moved. But then some vandal comes along and overturns your trash right in front of you and goes his way. What are you going to do with the mess that was made? Are you going to leave it and say, well, it's not my responsibility anymore? You want to make sure you pick it up. So if you cater for all of those things by doing it consistently, keeping wherever you are clean, regardless, you have to keep it clean. You know, it takes one, it takes one man to, to, to make that change, you know. Just one man um, in a community, maybe a family. Um, and sometimes it is true that sometimes when you look around, you, you, you know, you could be frustrated um, with what might be happening around you in terms of the environment and, and so you just join the band, you know, throwing things and, and in our fairness, you know, this kind of situation happens to people. And, uh, but you can change that. Yes. And uh, so yeah. you might determine, look, you see these high bushes notwithstanding who are not coming here and doing what. Um, I am not going to allow my house to be consumed yeah. by, by, by bushes yeah. or um, I am not going to see my drains stagnant. I am not going to throw up to this day I see people still going dumb things in the drain. I am not going to do that. So I get a little speed and I come out occasionally or you hire someone and I keep cleaning. After a time, you know, people watch you, you know, people are constantly looking for leadership. Mm -hmm. After a time, you might very well find the next neighbor starts to do that. And nothing is wrong if you say neighbor, you know, we could form a, um, a kind of cooperative group and clean this whole community. Mm -hmm. And that kind of spirit, once it catches on, you could see the whole community, um, you know, transform. And sometimes you see this even in communities, in a whole community, you might see a section where the people would have taken responsibility. And I'm saying that you don't have to become frustrated and say, this is how I, I have to be. The place is dirty and I'm not interested and I, I'm joining the band. You could make a difference by your very attitude. Indeed, indeed you can make, we can make a difference. You know, it is amazing sometimes when we start an initiative and other people come along, you know, they would say, you know, I had the same idea. You know, I had the same thought. But it takes just one person making that step yeah. forward to ensure. Because we are all stewards. Yeah. And we all have that responsibility. Let us just take it further from just talking about it and put it into action as we seek to uh, explore ways and means of how we can reuse, how we can reduce. Take, for example, in our homes, uh, you know, those transformers that we have, sometimes some of them are not working, and those transformers can be rewired, they can be re reused. Or even if you don't want to reuse it, you can give somebody who may have need of it. So we need to come up with creative ways and means of how we can help each other to reduce the, the garbage that is around us and to also maintain a clean and healthy environment. So it is not just on the, on the top of the pyramid. We, we, we focus on avoidance, on avoiding um, waste, avoiding the build up of waste. Then we deal with the whole issue of reducing waste and reusing waste. But there's also the issue of recycling, which I think speaks to the issue of infrastructure within the environment to be able to deal with recycling of, 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 of stuff. And um, I, I pray, though a small nation, that we will move our business community and those who, who carry the, the legislative power and the, the administrative power, that they will help us find ways. Because for sure, all down sites are going to get filled after a while. So we really have to find a way, a way we can recycle our stuff. And not just recycle, dealing with the whole concept of recovery. Yet or not. We need a, a, a real concerted approach. And it, it has to, it has to begin with each individual. Someone says recently that the, my area is clean when the um, entire city is clean, meaning that he will make relentless efforts 
to go about and ensure that not only his cities, his ear is clean, but all over. You know, recently I viewed the parachute um, display at Aingan with my children and we bought nuts. And while we ate our nuts and so on, the shells, I looked around and I ensured that nothing was uh, thrown away or the place was not lit or and I felt good, not one single shell anywhere. And I put the bags in my car. Soon after, I went to the road and a, another guy bought nuts. And the entire road was littered with his nut shells. So I asked him, oh, how could you do that? He said, well, do what, do what? We live in a lawless society. Oh, oh, when the law is for the lawless. <laughs> That's why we need to have stringent and strict enforcement so that some people will pay for the lawlessness. You know, just a few days ago, as I listened to your, your experience, Pastor David, I, I was going into the city to get something from my bike, and um, I was eating a banana while it was raining. And so I was coming out of the vehicle with a banana just, just in the middle of the, the, the peel, the peel in my hand. <laughs> I told myself, what are you going to do with it? I don't litter. I really don't like littering. So I, I searched around for bins. And this is an avenue in the Republic looking for bins. I can't find any. I, I was let you know, this is what I did. I went into boost, boosters, that, that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. high speed place. Yeah. And I <laughs> looked for their bin. And, and <laughs> this <laughs> bike. <laughs> Uh, I guess they will, they, will, they will tax me, but the whole idea of us being responsible, the whole idea of us um, not doing it because others are doing it is, is significant, it's important. Several years ago, it's over 17, almost 15 years ago, 17 years ago I was living in, uh, living in, in a residential community and I was forced based on how the members of that community um, kept their environment. And that was our gardens. And I had to clean my yard. I had to clean, I had to ensure the place was cut, or else I would stand out. And after a while, I removed from that place. And where I went, um, folks were not that vigilant and diligent in making sure that that happened. But I had come from this environment where every month, sometimes twice a month when it's rain, and you have to ensure that this is done. So I, we just started it myself for a while. We just continued doing this where we were now living, even though this was not the culture. I wanted to let you know. After we started a while, everybody in the community now does that. Sometimes they do it more often than we do it. Sometimes I feel, I feel bad that I don't do it as, as often as they do it. But the old concept of one person starting it. And I learned this, Pastor Hudson, I, I learned it from, the, from that consultation on solid waste management, the broken window theory. You start the good job and it will continue. You leave the broken window and everybody, when their window gets broken, they will want to leave it the same. You mentioned to the nutshell aspect. Um, you know, several of the low-lying yards, if persons were to take, for example, the peels, the skins of fruits, vegetables, and put it back in the yard. I know it will take some time, but over time, it adds to the fertility of the soil. Yeah. And sometimes, instead of going to the market and buying yes. some of the things, you improve the fertility of your yard, and eventually, you'll be able to plant. Added to that also, some of the skins you put in your yard also, they will grow, they will germinate and grow. And sometimes you find, you know, you look around your yard, you wonder where the stepper came from. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's because you didn't throw away the seeds in the garbage bin, but instead you put it in your yard. So it's an economic benefit, and at the same time, you can, over time, your yard will be lifted, and it will also beautify your yard. As you mentioned, you mentioned um, economic benefit, and earlier, uh, I think, um, Pastor, you made mention of recycling. And sometimes people are confused with what, what do we mean when we speak about recycling. And I remember clearly from the consultation where one of the presenters said that it has to do with 
making a new product yeah. from from whatever material, whatever waste that that might be. And I think Guyana is a developing country and a country with, with, with heavy potential. And we have seen this kind of potential. And so I think the time is right now for us to start you know, establishing recycling plants. Um, for example, um, lots of plastic, you know, we see all over the place and so on. Could you imagine there's a plant where you, you melt that plastic and you start to manufacture from that plant pots and spoons? People, people eat it a lot in this country. So, you know, those slim spoons again could be melted again and you keep recycling and so that there's an economic um, development that will come in there and also there will be a reduction in, in the kind of waste we see. And we know that plastic, for example, is not biodegradable. That will stand up for years. So we have to now start thinking about establishing some of these recycling. I am plants. so happy for those two examples, Pastor Lee <laughs> and Pastor Hudson. Uh, please permit me to share a quote from Andrew Carnegie, uh, an avid writer on leadership. He said, teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision. The ability to direct individual accomplishment towards organizational objectives. It is the fuel that allows common people to attain on common results. Why I use this quote is I believe we all have best practices, we all have success stories. Mm -hmm. But if we can just move it a step further by sharing those best practices, yeah in our homes, in our schools, mm -hmm. in the churches, the mosques, wherever we, we dwell, in the workplaces, people will begin to buy in and to say, well, okay, the, this can work for me, and then they'll be able to share those practices and actually implement them so that by just one person, mm -hmm. or by just one idea, that can create such you know, a great change. You know, while, while we are waiting, while we are waiting on the process of recycling, our biggest problem is disposal, the way we dispose of our waste. And I recall the days of the incinerator and those different things that we used to burn. And what I find happening now is that even though we are calling persons to this place of being responsible in the way you dispose of your waste, we, we need to be conscious of our neighbors also. For example, if you cut your grass and you want to get rid of it, and you think burning is the best way, don't burn it when it is green, so that it would smoke up and your neighbors might have it going outside. You know, people burn. People burn all over the place. You find people burning. So even as we call up each and every person to this place of being responsible, take into consideration your neighbors when you're disposing of your waste. Well, no, dry grass is, waste. no dry grass is, is, is good for the soil. Yeah. Yeah. You allow it to dry and then yeah. you plow it back in the soil. And you, it, don't it back it. Test, you don't need to burn it. You need to smoke um, the place. <laughs> <laughs> and not smoke all the place. You, know, you put it back in the soil and it helps in the fertility um, yeah. of Somebody the soil. Somebody telling you that it's a good mosquito. But listen to that word that Egan um, Paul used just now teamwork yeah. and uh, we all have been talking about this consultation I wonder if the authorities uh, the, if they can perhaps get together and really have a consultation these are the persons with the um, with the resources and just have a good discussion as the way forward um, we would like to say that um, you know well, we are a nasty people, the man said we lawless and all these kinds of things. But no, 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 no. I have met good people. That's right. right. Look into our homes. Our homes, our homes does not reflect what we see outside. Mm -hmm. So how is that possible? Mm -hmm. We no. we live in a clean environment in our homes and the outside nasty. That's where the Something has to be starts. done. <laughs> That's where the consultation starts. We gotta yeah. stop saying that we are nasty people. Yeah. Because as we keep declaring it, we prophesying over ourselves, we bring in a whole lot of dirt and everything right around us. So stop <laughs> the truth. saying that you're nasty <laughs> and do something about it. <laughs> Act upon we have to do that. We have to do that. Yeah, we are going to do that. There's a thing that I want to say. Yeah. 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 Yeah
<laughs> you know, a few days ago, as we talked, a few days ago, I, I, I was somewhere around Guyana stores. Parking was difficult, so I was searching around for a parking. When I finally found the spot, two cars had removed themselves. So I pulled it to the car and got the parking. And a guy on a motorcycle, who could have gone at the smallest speed, came with the motorcycle and he took up an entire space with a car. So I stopped and said, I said, hello, sir, how are you doing? You know, it might be better if you park right here um, so that somebody else who may want to park will get it. So he turned and watched me and looked at me. And the tax bill too. <laughs> then he said, wait, I thought you were a traffic police. <laughs> And the people around when they saw what was happening, they started to laugh and they said, they said, big man, leave you alone. He, 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 he looks stupid, you know. I said, no, he is stupid. He understands fully well what is the sense, is, is the arrogance, you know. And with the, the lack of concern, the lack of care for each other. And I pray that that spirit will return because God has given us the responsibility to take care of the garden to take care of our environment, to keep the place clean. God has given us that responsibility. And I love what Pastor David put in. How could your house be clean and the outside is so yeah. filthy? Mm -hmm. And there are things you can do. I learned recently that when I boil, when I soak my tea bag, I don't need to dump it. Just open yeah. it and throw it at um, uh, the root of the plants. Yeah. Because it, 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 it is excellent fertilizer. For the, for the plants, and I started to do that. And lots of tea bags come through, come out from the offices, from, 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 from our homes and so on. So let us become responsible, let us become more caring, not just for ourselves, but for those who live around us. God will be pleased, and I pray that the presence of God, as we do such a good job, the presence of God will come and tabernacle with us. I love that kind of presence. Because miracles take place in that kind of environment. May God continue to reach the next one as we continue to take care of our God's We thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I am Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.